In today's video I will talk about different pathologies that can occur in the posterior horns and roots of the menisci. Today's topic has been suggested by one of my patrons, Ruben. As a pioneer patron he can make suggestions and then I make a video out of it. At the same time I would like to welcome my new patron Panachotis. Hi there, thanks for your support and if you want to know more about Patreon and how you can support this channel, you can see the link down below. Let's start with the first case. Here we have a longitudinal tear of the posterior horn in a meniscus that is really really badly degenerated as you can see here. So we have a mucoid degeneration of the medial meniscus with longitudinal tearing extending all the way into the posterior horn and even the posterior root is thickened it's abnormal in signal intensity here and then we have this paramenisical ganglion cyst here and even here laterally or medially rather and even at the level of the root here at the insertion of the PCL we have an intraosseous cyst most likely a ganglion cyst so in this second patient we again here or at the level of the medial compartment and as we scroll centrally we can see the triangular shape of the medial meniscus and suddenly we have this change here in this proton density weighted sequence. Now, now you might wonder is this a tear, is this a ganglion cyst, what is it, is it a ghost sign? Best thing to do as always is to have a look at your other sequences and you can see here this is the same level, we have a loss of signal intensity in the fat saturated sequence here. Therefore, it's fatty centrally, it has the same behavior as bone, so it's probably bone, and therefore we are dealing with an intrameniscal ossicle here. This is even better depicted here on this coronal view here. So we are still here in the same patient, but we are dealing now with the third pathology, and you can see if we scroll here a little bit more to the anterior portion of the knee, we can see that we have a meniscus extrusion. Better visible here, and if you measure the distance, it's about 4 millimeters, and everything above 3 or higher is suggestive of a meniscus extrusion. And if you see this, you have to be very careful not to miss a meniscal root tear or something like that. So let's go and have a look. So we scroll posteriorly, and we can see here that there is a gap. So we don't have a root here. Let's again go back to the first sequence that we had a look at. This is proton density weighted. You can see here the fluid is hyperintense. This is the intrameniscal ossicle, so this is not a ghost sign. We come to that back later. We scroll further and we can see some remaining fibers here, but the rest of the root is completely gone. So this is a this is a root tear of the posterior horn of the middle meniscus. Or a root avulsion rather. One tip here is to always also have a look at your axials because you can nicely see the radial tears and root tears here as well. So here we are at the level of the joint, we can nicely see parts of the lateral meniscus and here parts of the medial meniscus. And if we scroll through we can see that the meniscus here comes to an abrupt end and we have this gap here, basically the root should attach here just next to the PCL. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So this is the PCL and we know that the posterior root of the medial meniscus should insert in this region and you can nicely see the gap here and this is the posterior horn of the meniscus. The root is torn here like this and slightly retracted because we have an extrusion. Once the tear goes through here the meniscus is not stable anymore and therefore can extrude to the medial side. So if you will and crawl through the meniscus here ossicle tear you might call this a ghost meniscus but i don't really would use this term here because it's in root avulsion and not the classical radial tear of the posterior horn and that brings us to the next patient so here we have another patient and we can see right here that we have this extrusion of the medial meniscus if we scroll posteriorly we need to be really mindful that we might be dealing with a significant meniscal pathology if we have this extrusion here and we can see that there is a large gap here and then we have the root here still attached but we don't see any connection between the posterior horn and the rest of the meniscus substance here. 
If we look at this here on the sagittal view, again a proton density weighted image, the meniscus is completely gone and then suddenly there is still meniscus left. So this is a ghost meniscus because it's disappearing tech, and then it's coming again. This is the root, this is the radial tear and here the meniscus comes back again. Again always look at the axials as well and we can see here parts of the medial meniscus and then you can follow it through here and you can see that there is a gap. So this is a large radial tear of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. However, keep in mind that not all tears are nice radial tears there. So this is another patient and brings us to another variant of a meniscus tear. And you can see here we have some fraying of the edge here and then suddenly we have the tear. This time it's longitudinal here and it's running through here. So as you can see, as I scroll through, it changes the orientation. And the best thing to do in such a case is to have a look at your other um, sequences. And again, here we have the meniscus. We follow it through. We can see a tear here. So here at this level, it's probably a radial component. And then we don't really see the tear. The root is okay. And the clue is then to have a look at your axials. And we can nicely see here the meniscus. We have here a radial component which is then changing its orientation into a more longitudinal tear, vertically oriented. And this is a flap because we have this tear here, the portion of the meniscus here flaps or dislocates a little bit here in this direction. And this is called a parrot peak tear. So in this next patient, we are dealing with an injury of the posteromedial corner. And if you want to know more about the anatomy of the posteromedial corner, go check out my video about it. Uh, and you can see the link to it in your upper right corner right now. So here we have a patient, it's a young patient. And if you just scroll through, you might think, okay, everything is all right. However, you can see here that we have a disruption of the posterior horn from the joint capsule. So this is a meniscal capsular separation here. And there are a variety of terms that you can use. Some refer to this as a ramp lesion, as some use ramp lesion for just longitudinal tears in the red zone of the meniscus, maybe at this location. Maybe this is even a very, very peripheral uh, longitudinal tear, but I would argue, because maybe there is some meniscus substance here left. But it doesn't really matter. You can still name this a ramp lesion or a meniscal capsule separation and you hint the surgeon during arthroscopy to this region where he specifically has to look for because they can frequently get missed. And there are even different subtypes uh, of ramp lesions which are not really important, I believe, but uh, you can see them here. Anyways, now let's go back to the case. So basically we have the joint capsule here. The meniscus is detached here from the joint capsule and the root itself is intact. Now this is a meniscal capsular separation or ramp lesion. And these kind of lesions are frequently associated with ACL tears and if we go to the central compartment you can clearly see this ACL tear here and if we scroll over to the lateral compartment you can see yet another variation or form of a posterior horn lesion and this is this one here. First of all, we have some kind of a complex tear of the meniscus here, but follow this structure here. So this is the Risberg ligament here running just um, behind the PCL here. So this is the, this is the Risberg ligament. And at some point it should connect to the base of the posterior horn. And here we can follow it on and on and on and on and it might only go back to the meniscus substance at this level very peripherally. So this is again a tear sometimes called a Risberg rib because the Risberg ligament rips or tears on this portion of the meniscus and some use the term zip sign because it's like a zip or a zipper on your jacket. We can try to see this here. This is the lateral 
portion of the knee. We go up. We can try to see here the Risberg ligament and normally it attaches somewhere at this level here back to the meniscus and here it goes on and on and on. So this is like a zipper here of the meniscus. It's a longitudinal tear here all the way. And be very mindful not to call every signal abnormality at the level of the Risberg insertion a zip tear or Risberg rip because a little separation here is still normal. So make this big PCL. This is the root of the posterior horn of the middle meniscus or the posterior root of the middle meniscus. Again PCL and here is the Risberg ligament and you can see we have a separation here. But we are so far in the central portion of the knee that this gap is still normal. Even here it's still normal, even here it's still normal and then they are fusing back and we have the normal bow tie appearance. In the other case the separation was up to this level here. So this is a typical pitfall at this region here. And if you noted it, this patient here has a discoid meniscus and there is another variant that can happen. So if the discoid meniscus is just attached with the Risberg ligament and we don't have a posterior root here, then it's a so-called Risberg variant of the discoid meniscus. That's it for this week. If you liked the video, give it a like and also make sure you subscribe to this channel and then hit also this bell notification button there because then you get an email every time I upload a new video and this is once a week. So make sure to come back and also recommend my channel to your colleagues if you think that might be of interest to them. And with that, thanks for watching and see you next week.